Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 12. Using mean and the mean absolute deviation to make comparisons. All right, so first we have a little number talk on decimal division here. Just some ways to think about how you might divide things using some mental math here. Um, so I'll let you do that one on your own. I'm going to skip that and move on to here because we're just running out on time to get these lessons done in the midst of all that's going on in the world this day. All right, so which player would you choose? Andre and Noah join Elena, Jada, and Lynn in recording their basketball scores. They all recorded their scores in the same way. The number of baskets made out of 10. Each collected 12 data points. Andre's mean number of baskets was 5.25 and his mean absolute deviation was 2.6. Noah's mean number of baskets was also 5.25 but his mean absolute deviation was 1. Here are the two dot plots that represent the data sets. The triangles indicate the location of the mean. And we can see that here and here. All right, so without calculating, decide which dot plot represents Andre's data and which represents Noah's data and explain how you know. Okay, so again, our mean is gonna be located where, right, where the triangle is at for both of them. They have the same mean. But what's different is their mean absolute deviation. One is at a 2.6 and one is at a one meaning that one is on average two points, most of the points are within 2.6 of the mean and one is about one. So when I think about this one, let's do the one first of all. Uh, if I go out from 5.25 and I go out one spot, I would go to 6.25 here and down there. So moving out one point, do I capture most of the points there with one, a deviation of one? Not really, I'm not catching hardly any. How about if I go from here out to one and a one. Are we capturing most of the points there with a standard, with a, with a mean absolute deviation of one? It sure does look like it. So this one seems to be more of the one. But what if I go 2.6? Well, let's go one, two and a half, one, two and a half. We can see here that this seems to match that one much better, doesn't it? So from what we can tell, this one seems to be Noah's mean right here. And this one seems to be Andre's mean based upon the difference in the mean absolute deviation. Recall, this is talking about how much variability, variability there is in the data sets, how much things are spread out, so to speak. So one has a greater spread than the other one, right? 2.6 is greater than one. This is gonna have a larger spread. And we can see that here with Andre's, it has a much larger spread. So we can tell which is which. So the question B on the next page says, if you're captain of the basketball team and it can only use one more player, who would you choose? Well, again, they have the same average. The averages are the same. The mean's the same, but the one who's more consistent is gonna be Noah. So I would go with Noah on my team, and the reason is he's more consistent. And that's a good reason to add him to your team. Okay, let's look at number two. It says an eighth grade student decided to join Andre and Noah and kept track of his scores. His data set is seen here. The mean for him is six. So let's see if we can calculate his mean absolute deviation. Recall to do that, I'm going to measure the distance from six for all of his values and then divide by, in this case here, there are 12 data sets here. So we'll divide by 12. So we're going to do, uh, okay, the distance from 6 here is 0. The distance from 6 between 6 and 5 is 1. 6 and 4, distance is 2. 6 and 7, 1. 6, 6, 0. 5 is 1. 7 is 1. 8 is 2. 5 is 1. 6 is 0. 5 is 1. And 8 is 2. So those are all my distances. So I want to find the average of the distances or the distance difference in distances. Okay, that's my first step I wanna do here, step one. So when I do that, when I add that up, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 and I divide that by, so this is the sum, divided by the number, which is 12, and that's gonna give me one is the mean absolute deviation. So draw a dot plot to represent his data, dot plot, and mark the location of the mean with the triangle. 
Okay, so we're gonna draw this out here. We can see his values range from four to eight. So we'll go four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. And we have one, four. We have one, two, three, four, fives. So one, two, three, four, fives. We have one, two, three, sixes. One, two, three, sixes. We have one, two, sevens, two, sevens. And we have two, eights. So there's our dot plot. Now our mean, it said, was six. So we're going to put a triangle at six. So we can put a triangle right here. We'll just put a triangle right here at six. There's our triangle at six. So that's our mean. Now compare the eighth, compare the eighth grade student's mean and mean absolute deviation to Noah's mean. Okay. Well, we have the mean and the mean absolute deviation is what we're comparing. So we have Noah and we have the eighth grade kid. We don't have a name for him yet. So Noah's mean was 5.2. 2.5 and his mean absolute deviation was 1. For the 8th grade student here, his mean was 6 and his mean absolute deviation was also 1. So when we compare them, we can see Noah had a smaller average. Okay, so we have different means. But the same mean absolute deviation. Okay. So when we talk about that, that means on average, the eighth grader is making more points with the same consistency at NOAA. NOAA makes fewer points, but the same consistency as the eighth grade kid. So when you compare the dot plots, what do you notice? Well, what we notice is that they are very similar. So this is a dot plot for the eighth grader. Look back at NOAA's dot plot, right? Um, the spread is very similar. NOAA definitely had a peak at five, and this student has a peak at five as well, right? And but there's more that are a little bit higher up than over here. Here's there's only four values above a five. Here there are five, six, seven values above a five, which is why the average is a little bit higher there. Okay. We can also take a look at what we call the distribution. And so Noah's distribution, his scores go from three to eight. And for the eighth grade kid, his scores go from four to eight. So he doesn't have any low scores compared to Noah. So what can we say about their shooting accuracy? Okay, we could say that in terms of accuracy, the eighth grader is has a higher accuracy than Noah because the mean is higher, and consistency they are actually are the same when it comes to consistency because they are having the same mean absolute deviation. All right, let's look at activity number three called swimmers over the years. So here are swimmers over the years. In 1984, the mean age of swimmers in the U.S. swimming team was 18.2 years, and the mean absolute deviation was 2.2. So that's the mean one year. In 2016, the mean was 22.8, and the mean absolute deviation was 3. How has the average, the mean, of the women on the U.S. swimming team changed from 84 to 16? Well, it was 18.2 and now it's 22.8. So what has happened to the mean? We would say it is increasing. And it actually, it's increased by about 4.6 years for the, for, the, for the typical average age. So we have older people swimming on the Olympic team in 2016 compared to 1984. The swimmers were much younger in 1984 than they are in 2016. So we have some older swimmers there, okay? Are the swimmers on the 1984 team closer in age to the 2016? So when we're talking about closer in age, what we're talking about here is your mean absolute deviation, the spread. Closer in age means we have less spread, so a smaller mean absolute deviation. Well, the mean absolute deviation for 84 was going to be 2.2. .2, and in 2016, the mean absolute deviation was 3. So because this has a smaller spread, there is, there are closer in age, right? So because there's less variability, and that's what the mean absolute deviation tells us there. So now here you go. Here's a dot plot that shows the ages of the women on the U.S. teams in '84 and '16. Use them to make two other comments about um, the swimming team and how it's changed over the years. 
So we could definitely say that there are certainly um, um, the age of swimmers has increased right over the years from what it was before. We could say that there's a difference here, 23 and 30, a difference of seven years um, in the two oldest swimmers on both teams there. We can say that in the difference here is that now there are no swimmers under the age of eight, 18 or under the age of 19 on the team, where before you had several that were under that age there. So lots of things you could say regarding these things. The youngest were 15, now the youngest is 19, so a difference of four. So a variety of things you could say based upon those charts. So in summary, sometimes two distributions have different means but the same mean absolute deviation. Okay, and that just simply means that you know you're going to have some variability here, and that's what we're talking about here. So when you look at the weight of pugs or the weight of beagles, for example, the means are different but the difference for how they vary is the same okay so the variability of, uh, is going to be what we're talking about we're talking about the mean absolute deviation is that variability piece all right so take some time to work on your homework and then we'll check that together in just a few minutes all right here we go lesson 12 homework the dot plot shows the amounts of time that 10 U.S. students and 10 Australian students took to get to school. Which statement is true about the mean absolute deviation? Again, talking about the variability, talking about how spread out things are. So talking about that between the two data points. Okay, um, compared to Australia, Australia compared to the U.S. So is the Australian MAD, is it less, is it less spread than the U.S.? Well, the U.S. is clustered here between about 5 and 20, right? 5 and 20. And this one goes from about 5 to 45. So this is definitely more spread. So it's going to have a greater mean absolute deviation, just based upon what we can visually see happening right here. So is it less? Nope. It's going to be more. Is it equal to the U.S.? No. Is it approximately equal to... Is it close? Exactly, approximately? No. Is it significantly greater? Yes. And we can see that here that this looks to be a lot greater range. So we're going to say it's going to be a greater mean absolute deviation. Number two, the dot plots show the amounts of time that 10 South African students and 10 Australian students took to get to school. Without calculating, answer the questions. Which data set has a smaller mean? Okay. So in terms of mean, that's going to be kind of your it's it's your central, right? Looking for which one's more like in the middle ish, okay? And so I would say overall, because it has a cluster here of the small ones, and this has a lot spread out in the high area there, I would say because of that, I would say that Australia probably has a smaller mean because there are more values in uh, the lower the lower times. Again, you want to explain it with your own words. I'm going to talk you through it. Which data has a smaller mean absolute deviation? So less uh, variability, right? Smaller spread. Where are the numbers more bunched together? This one's spread from 5 to 60. This one is spread from 5 to 45. So this has a smaller spread. So again, we would go to Australia. Plus, most of them are really in this range right here, just that one outlier over there. So what does smaller mean, what does a smaller mean tell us in this context? Well, the mean is talking about the average time to get to school. And we would say that it is, in this case here, is less for kids in Australia. What does a smaller mean absolute deviation tell us? Okay, that tells in this context there, it takes a similar time. So most take is that, that in the context here is that most take a uh, similar time to the average to get to school. Or in our case here, there is a greater variety of times in South Africa. Okay, 
There's a greater variety of times to get to school in South Africa. One takes a whole hour to get there. So those are some things you might notice. All right, number three. Two high school basketball teams have identical records of 15 wins and two losses. Sunnyside High, right? So Sunnyside High School has a mean score of 50 and an MAD of four. Shadyside, so Shadyside has a mean score of 60 and its MAD is 15 points. Okay. So Lynn read the, read the records of each team's score. She likes a team that had nearly the same score for every game it played. So she wants the same score for every game, so she wants less variability, which means she wants a small mean absolute deviation. So the one that had the le least deviation is going to be, in this case here, Sunnyside. Sunnyside had a mean absolute deviation of 4, which is less than the 15 of the uh, shady side school. Okay. So that's the important thing there. Again, what that means is that shady side, while the average is 60, you can go 60, but you can go this way 15 more, which is 75, or 15 more this way, which is going to be 45. But the mean absolute deviation for the team is 50, which means they could go up by 4 to 54, or down by 4 to 46. That's kind of the range of scores you'd expect to see there. Okay? So they want to, she wants to pick this one there. Jada thinks the perimeter of this rectangle can be represented with the expression A plus B plus C plus B. Again, perimeter, we're just measuring the distance around. Andre thinks it can be 2 times A plus 2 times B. Do you agree with either or both? Well, if you take A plus A plus B plus B, which is this plus this plus this plus this, that definitely gives you the perimeter. But I can also combine uh, terms if they have the same variable. I have 1a here and 1a there for a total of 2a's and over here I have 2b's. So this one here matches what Jada thinks and this one matches what Andre thinks. So I would agree with both of them. Alright, draw a number line. Plot the, and label three numbers between negative 2 and negative 8 but not including those ones there. So we're going to draw a number line. We can put negative 8 right here. Here's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And we can put these here. I'm going to plot three points. So here we go. Here's negative 7, negative 5, and negative 3. Use the number that you plotted and the symbols less than or equal to, greater than, to write three inequality statements. Sure. So we could say negative 7 is less than negative 5. We could say negative 7 is less than negative 3. We could say negative 3 is greater than negative 7. So these are some different things. Are there more to say? Sure. <laughs> All right, adult elephant seals generally weigh about 5,500 pounds. If you weighed five elephant seals, would you expect the seal to weigh exactly that amount? I would go with, nope, not, <laughs> I don't think so. Again, explaining here. The chances are that all five random seals that weigh the exact same amount is not very likely. There is going to be some variability in your measurements. That is always going to be the case. That's just reality. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.